Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the week 9 material. And in this segment we're going to take a look at how we can actually plot a contour graphic using the matplotlib module. And in the field of meteorology this is something that's very very helpful to know about because think about all the weather maps that you've seen and think about how pretty much all of those weather maps have some sort of contour plot on there, whether it's a contour that's all lines or a contour that is all uh, color-coded, all the pixels are color-coded, but this particular function is especially relevant to the field of meteorology for this reason. Pretty much everything has some sort of contour plot, so uh, it's why I want to spend some time talking about how to actually contour information. Again, we're going to make use of the matplotlib module. But before we get into that, we should also go ahead and mention a few things that we've going on here. So again, I'm going to be using the NumPy module, so that means I'm going to be using arrays to some degree. And inside the NumPy module, there's this function called zeros. And this allows you to create an empty array as opposed to defining a list manually and then uh, converting that list to an array using the numpy.array function. This np.zeros function is a very helpful tool because it allows you to create array as large as you want and you can specify you can also specify the dimensionality of the array itself. So in this particular case notice how I've got a set of parentheses and a set of brackets here. It turns out this Python list and the brackets and the comma this Python list will tell the zeros function what our array will actually look like. And the first value here which we've in uh, which when we've been working with two-dimensional data we've commonly referred to as the row number that also comes into play here so within the set of brackets the first number here specifies the number of rows that should go in our array and this specifies the number of columns so what this is going to do is this is going to create an empty array that is 10 rows by five columns and this will create an array where each individual entry, that is out of all 50 entries that we get from that, each individual entry will initially be set equal to zero. And if we want to visualize that, so again, this is the what we're going to be running here. And that's basically going to create an array that looks something like this. So again, column is in green. The rows are in blue here. And this is going to create a nice... 10 by 5 array, 10 rows by 5 columns, and each individual entry in the array will be 0. And if we jump back to our Python program, we can see there's some other stuff going on here. So here you can see I have the name of the array, which we've just called empty array. Nothing special about this variable name. This is just something that I use for the sake of demonstration. This could also be x, as long as you're consistent about it. That will also work, but I just simply called it empty array. So now I have on these three lines here, I have something that goes to the effect of empty array, bracket, some number, comma, some number, equal sign, and then something on the right-hand side here. So we kind of explored this in a previous segment, how we can alter the individual entries in an array. And that, again, is coming into play here. So here we're saying, in this case, this row, this column, whatever that entry is, should be set equal to 20. And again, if we want to employ a visual aid, to see what exactly goes on there. So I'm saying take this row, row 0, this column, which is column 0, which correspond to this entry, take that value and set it equal to 20. And then similarly, we can do the same thing with another entry. So in this case, we want row 0, column 1, that entry will be set equal to 10. And similarly, we can say take row 1, column 0, and set that entry to 5. And that's what we've got going on here. We're just simply taking a specific slot in our array and setting it equal to some specific value of our choosing. So again, this array started off being a whole bunch of zeros, and now we're going to actually put in some numbers here that we'll actually be sort of working with when we go to make sort of a simple contour plot. And here, these two variables, xList and yList, these will actually come into play uh, a little bit later on. And I'm going to reemphasize this again a little bit later on. This is not the same thing as what I have here on lines 15 and 16. And again, I will prove that to you. So here, if we print out what X list is and we print out what Y list is, you'll see that we do in fact have, in the case of X list, we have a list that contains five entries, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in the case of Y list, we have a list that contains 10 entries. These two lists 
that is not the same case. These two lists each have two entries, and I will illustrate this in great detail, why this doesn't work, and why this is uh, really not going to work for you if you try to use this in the contour function. But again, that's just to prove that these lists do in fact contain five items and 10 items respectively. And that's gonna be very important to keep in mind when we actually go to apply the contour function. So when we had plt.plot earlier, again, plt, this is so the, this is in conjunction with this as part up here. So the computer knows we're talking about matplotlib. So this plt.contourf, this is going to create a contour plot. And the order in which you feed things into this function, you have a list of x values, a list of y values, and then here, the third value, you plug either a two-dimensional list or a two-dimensional array in for that third value. If you plug a one-dimensional array in here, it's not going to work. You're going to get error messages. This must be a two-dimensional array, what I have highlighted on the screen here. And we can see that this is two-dimensional because we have stuff that's in terms of rows and columns, which is a two-dimensional array. If this is not two-dimensional, you're not going to be able to get a contour plot to actually work. These other values must be one-dimensional lists or arrays. We can see from what we have in the console here, x list is this, a nice one-dimensional list. y list is this, also a nice one-dimensional list. This is a two-dimensional array. Now to really see what's going to happen here, I'm again gonna go back to the visual aid. So at when we're actually going to contour uh, this, where we're actually going to contour this data, this is what our two-dimensional array looks like. So again, if I go back to here real quick, that's the data set that we're actually going to be contouring on our graph. And this is what it looks like at that particular point in the program. Now, something that's important to keep in mind, when you're going to plug in the values for X list and Y list, the number of items that are in X list must be the same number of columns that are inside of your data set. So in this case, my data set has five columns and my X list has five numbers. Again, X list is this. So my list of X values does in fact have the same number of columns as the data set that I'm actually contouring. And similarly, the number of items in the Y list, again, which shows here, you can see there's 10 items in this list here, which is in Y list. So the number of items in your list of Y values must be the same number of items that are, uh, must be the same number as there are rows inside of the array that contains your data set here. So my data set in this case is 10 rows by five columns. My list of Y values is 10 items long. So I have one item in this list of Y values for every row in my data set and I have one item in my list of X values for every column in my data set. And to really illustrate that, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this from a little bit of a different perspective. So you can see these are the entries in X list. So you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice how each individual entry in this list called X list, there's a column that I can marry that up to. So I can take this entry and marry it up to this column. I can take this entry and marry it up to this column and so on and so forth. There's a nice one-to-one -one correspondence principle that is satisfied here. And similarly, if I take a look at my list of Y values, you can see how each individual entry in my list of Y values can be married up to a row in the data set that we're contouring. And again, just to refresh your memory on what those lists look like, this is X list, this is Y list. You can see 10 items in Y list, and there's also 10 item, or 10 rows in my data set five items and X list, and there's also five columns in my data set. So this gets a thumbs up and it's something the computer can actually work with. Now, if you violate this one-to-one -one correspondence principle by doing the common mistake that we have here, and again, I have this, I have this in all caps saying this will not work, and I'm gonna show you why this doesn't work. And again, keep in mind, don't be confused by this thinking that there are five entries in that list somehow. There are in fact only two entries in this list. And I will show you what the computer is gonna see if you try to use those two lists instead. So if I have a, a list of X value that has only two items, so this number goes to this column, this number goes to this column, uh-oh, we have a problem. These three columns are single forever. They don't have a value to be married up to. 
So that one-to-one -one correspondence principle that we emphasize gets violated. And the reason why it gets violated again is because our list of X values has only two entries in it, but we have five columns. Since we don't have an entry in our X list for every column in our data set, this doesn't work. And the same issue arises with our list of Y values. So again, this value can go to row zero. This value can go to row one. Uh-oh. We have eight rows here that cannot be married up to a Y value. So again, the number of items in your list of X values must equal the number of columns in your data set. And the number of items in your list of Y values must equal the number of rows in your data set. If this one-to-one -one correspondence principle is violated, even in the slightest, you're going to get a lovely error message instead of a lovely graphic. So this does not work. If at any point, to put this in more simple terms, if you find yourself tempted to do something like what's here on lines 15 and 16, you're setting yourself up for a lot of frustration and a lot of confusion. Just keep in mind what I mentioned, the number of items in your list of X values, which coincidentally is called X list, the number of items in this list must equal the number of columns in your data set. And the number of items in this list must equal the number of rows in this data set for things to work properly. Now, jumping down to what's here on line 19, we have this color bar function, which basically all that does is just put a color bar on our graphic. So it's going to create a whole bunch of pretty colors, and the color bar will give us a sense as to what color goes up to what value in our data set here. So there's nothing really significant about this data set, but if you're, say, contouring, say, something like temperature or pressure, it'd be nice to know which color goes to which temperature and what pressure goes to what color and whatnot. And then much like before, the save fig function, again, this will save our graphic to an image file with this name, and the image file will be saved in the same folder as this Python program. So if we want to give this program a whirl, and you can see it did in fact, so that's what our contour uh, plot looks like. And if we want to go and see that, where it got saved, you can see there's the other graphic that we made, and here there's the contour graph that we just created. And something that you'll want to keep in mind, this is something we talked about in the week four unit, how the computer's coordinate system is different than your typical Cartesian grid, where uh, 0, 0 in the top left is actually the origin. But one of the nice things about matplotlib is it actually honors that coordinate system. But you want to keep that in mind. So in fact, I can kind of go back to what we had here. So this is written in the perspective of, say, a spreadsheet, which is also the perspective of the computer's coordinate system how my values of y increase as I go down the screen. But you can see in this particular graphic, that is not the case. You can see it's actually reversed, which is the typical Cartesian y-axis here. So that's just something you'll want to keep in mind when you're working with these data sets, that the, uh, the coordinates in the y direction might get a little bit wonky, and you'll just have to design your Python code to account for that. And you can see it produces a bit of a contour graph here. Now, this is if you want a field contour graph. Uh, if you want just uh, an assortment of lines, then you use, instead of contour f, you just say plt.contour. And if you want to see what that looks like, there you can see it draws a bunch of lines which represent contours here. So the main difference between these two graphs is this actually fills in the contours. This just keeps it as an assortment of lines. And the graphic on our desktop looks pretty much the same with the exception of the color bar. So a color bar is not really going to be relevant unless, uh, well, it is relevant here, but color bar is especially helpful when you're working with a filled contour as opposed to a contour that has all lines like this one. But that's going to do it for this segment on contouring information to a graph, again, using the matplotlib module. And in the final segment, we're going to cover something that is sort of an aside. It's the idea of a nested for loop, but this is something that becomes very helpful when you're dealing with uh, multidimensional data sets, and that'll be the topic for the next segment. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.